But I'll tell you what, God is going to arouse a bride that won't be stopped. You understand that? And that's what these meetings are about. Now, there's one verse that's been going off just exploding in me, and it's Isaiah 21, verse 5, the last section of Isaiah 21, verse 5. Here's what it says. The revelers, they've set a watch. They have laid out the rugs. It's a banquet. It's a, it's a, it's a, they've laid out the rugs. They're sitting there, and they've got a watchman, but they have made no other precaution. And it says the last part, Isaiah 21, verse 5, Arise, you champions. Arise, you princes, and oil the shield, because the deadly foe is at the door. If it's ever time for the church to wake up and stand up, it's now. The deadly foe is at the door. Rev, uh, Romans eleven thirteen. Romans Romans says eleven th- uh, thirteen says it is high time now for us to wake out of sleep. Don't you think? We got to get up and rouse to reality. Anyway, what a time to be alive. Really, I think it's the most crucial time in human history. Don't you? So I said to God, Look who he's let live. Most crucial time in human history. He could have used anybody in the book of Hebrews, but he chose us to live in this crucial time. So I said to him, what are you thinking? And he answered me just like that. I'll tell you why he's brought us to the front. Here it is. When I said, what are you thinking? He said, yes, I finally found me a people weak enough to work in. Now, not weak in character, not weak in ethics, not weak in morals, weak in our own ability. He said, I found me a generation that's embraced John 15, 5. Without him, we can't do anything. In him, by him, through him, we're unstoppable, though. You understand that? So that's why we're in this thing, because he chose us. Can you imagine God choosing us to be on his work team? Isn't it, isn't it 2 Corinthians? Yes, it is. 2 Corinthians chapter, what, 6, verse 1. Labor together with God as God's fellow helpers. We're on his team. Ephesians 2.10. I studied that verse in every English translation of the Bible I could find on earth. Ephesians 2.10. It says, we are his workmanship. Created in, you're going to hit me with that swirl, sound like Morgan Freeman? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. <laughs> Ephesians 2.10. It says, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before ordained that we conduct ourselves in them. One translation says, you are the best God could do to display who he is. One, of them, one translation says, you're his stroke of genius to display his God deeds. So when the devil says, who do you think you are? Go, well, I'm the best God could do. <laughs> we got to get rid of that stinking thinking and start seeing ourselves as God sees us. Listen, we're kings and priests. Revelations 5. Re- Revelations chapter 1, verse 5 and 6 says unto him, that loved us, washed us from our sins in his blood, and has made us priests and kings. It says the Bible, a priest, one of his missions is to stop conflicts. It said about a king, his word has authoritative power. You know, in meetings like this, we forge the future just with our words. There's a, there's a verse in the Bible, if it wasn't the Bible, I'd never believe it. Here it is, you ready? Yeah. I'll paraphrase it. Make up your mind what you want, tell God what that is, and he'll get it for you. Yeah. What? Make up your mind what you want. Tell God what that is and he'll get it for you. Now, where is that? It's Job 22, 28, Amplified Classic Version says, And you shall decide a thing. Make up your mind. Then you decree what you've decided and the Lord will establish it. The word establish means bring into being. And the light of his favor will shine upon your pathway. We better thank God for his favor. I just quoted 2 Corinthians 6, 1. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 said, It is a time of favor. Yes, it is. It's a time of an assured welcome. That's what it says. 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. It is an acceptable time, a time of favor, a time of an assured welcome, a time God will hear you and help you. Jesus appeared to me and he was sad, but he's not sad. I don't like these pictures of Jesus look like a Holocaust victim. That's not the Jesus you're going to see when you step into heaven. I'll tell you the Jesus you'll see when you step into heaven. Remember Akiana, the little girl that got caught up in heaven? Look at the Jesus she painted. That's what you. That's the one you'll see when you step into heaven. You won't see some sad, hollow-eyed. No, he's the happiest man ever lived. But he appeared to me and he was sad. 
I mean, standing right like that, and he was sad. He said, Bobby, my people don't like to talk to me. He said, the least attended service in any church is prayer meeting. But then he said, I'm going to give you a phrase that will turn prayer from a drudgery to a delight, from a duty to a desire. And he said it with a twinkle in his eye. I said, God, I want, it. I want you to give me a phrase that will change people's paradigm about prayer. And here's what he said. You tell my people what true prayer is. He said, true prayer is an audience with the king. So he wrote the book, Audience with the King. Wow. Listen, John 16, 24. John 16, 24, that's in the red part of the Bible. Jesus said, up until now, you've not asked. Ask now, and you'll get what you're asking, so your heart will be happy. Why now? 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Now is an acceptable time. A time of assured welcome. A time God will hear you and help you. God wants to answer prayer. 1 John 5, 14. This is the what? Confidence we have in Him. If we'll ask Him anything according to His word, we know that He hears us. If we know that He hears us, we're totally confident we're going to get what we're asking. He that comes to God must believe, number one, He is. Number two, He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. If you're talking to God not expecting an answer, they lock people up for that. <laughs> talking to somebody you can't see, you know. He that comes to God must believe he is. He's a prayer in God. So we wrote a book about prayer. Boy, Heidi. In here we deal, deal a whole thing about the altar of incense. Whew. When you pray, your prayers are so special. When they come up before God, God catches your prayers in a golden censer. Hand your prayers to an angel. And one day God will mix his fire with your prayers and hurl them back to earth. And here we talk about what happens when that happens. Lightnings and thunderings, rumblings and roarings. Boy, I, listen, anyway, prayer. Prayer really does work. It's the most powerful weapon we have. While we're talking about weapons, the other day the Lord said, uh, I, I, I don't hear much being taught about a very useful weapon. Uh, I said, uh, okay, what weapon is that? He said, the weapon of peace. Romans 16, 20. Romans 16, 20, Romans 16, 20 said, The God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Wow. 